To Orono High School we go. Benilde won this matchup 6-2 last season. Orono looking for revenge and a mistake by the punting unit for Benilde. It's going to be Orono's ball in good field position. Sets up a touchdown round by Veroniak, and it's 7-0. In fact, it's 7-0 at halftime. Orono. Fourth down, Orono will punt. Veroniak will fake it and then tuck it away, and he keeps the drive alive with a big first down. And it sets up a run. Watch him with the moves here. Veroniak will cut it one way, then back the other, slicing through the Benilde defense. 23 yards down to the nine-yard line as he's dragged down. After pass interference call in the end zone, Veroniak from one yard out, 14-0. Third quarter lead for Orono. Their defense came into the night saying we are going to shut down the Benilde sweep, and they did just that all night long. Fourth quarter, Benilde fourth and five at the seven. Jason Seasting to Ryan Hibbard, first and goal at the two. It would set up Benilde's only touchdown of the night. Michael Fuller takes it over the top, 14-7. Fourth and nine now. Watch this. Jake Carlson with the pass. It's tipped by Veroniak. Danny Rogers tries to make the catch to keep the drive alive, but he does not have possession. He's out of bounds. It's the correct call, and the game is over. Orono wins 14-7 to take the Metro Alliance Conference, and let's hear from the winners. One, two, three, you know, it's, it's nice to get in that end zone after you've been plugging for so hard. And I got to say, offensive line, you know, they kept on sticking with their blocks, and got to tip my hat to them. And it was a lot of fun because as soon as we get that end zone, you know, we're in, we're in victory lane. Our defense was outstanding. We knew we had to take them on at the line of scrimmage. If they got a little uh, push upfield, they were going to bend it back and get lots of yards. And, and we really won the battle of the trenches in that defensive line. The star running back, Greg Betlock, out with a sprained ACL, could miss three weeks' worth of action. The Eagles are so deep, however, Matt Holland would take over, number 21. Junior running back, 12-yard TD run, and it's 28-14 Eden Prairie. Nick Gustafson with a nice run. Coming up here, the counter move, back inside, great blocking downfield. He's gone, 35-14, Eden Prairie on their way. Holland had a nice night, 12 carries, 97 yards, and two touchdowns. Watch this, right down the sidelines, he almost goes all the way. He's pulled down at the very last second, but it would set up a Holland touchdown run. That's six straight Lake Conference titles, 46 wins in a row in the lake for Eden Prairie, and let's hear from the winners. Uh, we just we just knew right away we'd have to we have to establish the run first, and then work on the passing. And Bet Matt Bykowski played a big game today, stepped it up. Henry Barnes just ma was amazing today, so we just all stepped it up today. They a very disciplined team. They got the talent to do what they had. It's just that we ran the right things, and we knew what we could do to score on them. So Eden Prairie wins. Big game in the lake between Burnsville and Egan. Burnsville led 6-3 at the half. Watch this. Fake field goal. They snap the ball to the kicker. Hands off to Mark Dolenz, and he throws it wide open. Bob Everard, touchdown. Egan takes the lead 10-6. In the fourth quarter, Burnsville's Matt Herman takes it in from eight yards out, and the Blaze regain the lead at 13-10. A little bit later now, Burnsville quarterback Derek Smith will roll right. He will keep it and take it in. Watch this. From 21 yards out, Burnsville ups their lead to 20 to 10 in the game. Egan trying to come back. The lateral to Dolence. Dolence tries to go downfield, but watch this as it comes up. Mark Leonard will pick it off, and Burnsville will end up beating Egan tonight in Egan. A big victory final was 20 to 13. Kennedy and Rosemont, and Rosemont looking excited to win this football game tonight. And the Irish on the move, inside handoff. That's going to go for a touchdown run against Kennedy. And the final score tonight is Rosemont wins at home. Score was 27 to 6. Second quarter, Kyle Savakul, 34-yard field goal. He's an outstanding kicker, 12-10 Blaine. Head coach Dave Nelson trying to get his club in this ball game, and they're always tough. Patrick Williams takes it around the corner. 59 yards on the touchdown run as he breaks tackles, and it gives Blaine a 24-12 to 12 lead. He would add the two-point conversion, and Blaine would win this game 26-12, the final. And it's a big win for the Bengals. They're 7-0. and Let's hear from the winners. Uh, especially against a team like Elk River, they're very, very uh, versatile on offense. they got a lot of weapons to, to hurt you with. So uh, defense was huge. Second half, stepped it up and uh, shut them out. Overall, just, you know, the linemen were getting their pushes better. They were pushing people around. Our running backs were breaking tackles. Again, in the first half, we weren't doing the, those things. 
So we just we came out and we just had a little fire under ourselves and we went out and did it. Bengals did do it, 7-0 seven, uh, seven and oh on the season. This is Berglund, the quarterback to Ted Bickle. Nice play as uh, Hopkins taking on Minnetonka. Berglund the sneak, but Hopkins too much tonight. The quarterback ran for four touchdowns, and then you add this TD run by James Windsor, and it's a big win. Watch him go around the corner. Bob Cripper, the cameraman, trying to hang in there. He does. He gets him down the sidelines and into the end zone, and Hopkins wins tonight after that heartbreaking loss to Wyzetta last week. Final tonight, 42-21. Getting ready to go. This could be the Raiders of the future right there. Here's Marino, the quarterback, drops back. Brandon Bowser in the end zone, wide open, 7-0. Following a safety, watch Kim Sarin. Picks up through the uh, defense of the Cougars, and he's gone 19 yards, the final, 63-0 in favor of Creighton. Mustangs trailing 14-7. They have possession of the ball. Here comes the option. Luke Johnson's pitch gets away. Dan Weber can't get it. Wild scramble ensues. Several players have a shot at it, but it's recovered in Moundsview territory by Woodbury's Josh Matthews. From there, the Royals feed Moundsview a steady diet of hard running, and Dave Ugai is the guy. Inside the five with this nice run, it would set up a field goal. Woodbury wins this game, as you see the field goal, 17-10 the final, so Moundsview loses for the first time in the conference. Irondale's offense on the move. Quarterback Andrew Partnin will pitch it to Cooper Osby, and the Knights are in business at home against Monticello. Nice pitch at the very last second. Later in the drive, Partnin to Brian Dahl. 36-yard scoring strike. Irondale takes the lead, 7 to nothing. But Monticello came to play tonight. Chris Reeder will run it from eight yards out to tie the game at 7-7, and the Magic would actually take the lead right before the half. Reeder would score again, but Irondale survives 28-26 at home tonight against Monticello. Cambridge playing at Spring Lake Park. Josh Nelson gets in for Spring Lake. They actually led this game 14-0. Actually, that's, uh, uh, yeah, that's Nelson. And then Cambridge will stop the play here on the, uh, on the defensive side. They come back in the second half to win it 23-20. So that's a big win for Cambridge on the road tonight. On one side, there's Edina, the Metro powerhouse, having a great season. Their musical selection tonight. Phantom of the Opera. On the other side, a much different school, Albany, a powerhouse in their own right. But compared to Edina, much smaller. Where is Albany? I'm curious. It's, it's by Ava. About there, you know where St. Cloud is? Yeah. It's about 50 miles Sorry. south. Or, anyway. North, North, Northwest. Northwest, there. Their musical selection of choice, not Andrew Lloyd Webber. They're going with cowbells. They, they said we can't use them, though, so just have... No cowbells in Edina? And it's a misconduct. We may use them. Oh. What is that at the state tournament? Though? Bring it on. Edina shows their big school muscle and sets the tone early. Timothy March does just that, taking the ball 45 yards on the first possession. A few plays later, it's Brad Hildebrand pitching to March, and the Hornets go up 7-0. But Albany isn't intimidated. Corey Schiffler keeps it, and the Husky quarterback runs 31 yards to get Albany in the mix. That's where Kurt Grabmeyer goes in, and all of a sudden, this isn't a game about big school, small school, but rather a battle between two very evenly matched teams. Edina can sure move the ball, though. Brad Hildebrand hits his favorite target, Richard Prestis, and he stays in bounds. Second quarter now, it's the same combo, Hildebrand to Prestis, a 21-yard touchdown, and the Hornets are up by seven. Before the half ends, it's Hildebrand leading the charge one more time, this time keeping it himself, 20 to 7, Edina at the half. Uh, Brad Hildebrand's come in and played really well. The guy's a stud. The guy is a stud. Don't count out Albany. Corey Schiffler to Dan Hills. Albany's back in business. Then it's Ben Grush in from two yards out. 20 to 14. Watch out, Edina. But I think Albany settled in, took some things away from us, and then as the game kind of went on, I suppose we got nervous. We made some mistakes, but uh, we hung in there. Our defense played tremendous. And in the end, that defense does hold the Huskies. Edina over Albany tonight. Final score, 20 to 14. It's Albany's first loss. We just had everybody going to the ball. 11 guys, you know, to the ball. We're not a very big team, but you know, when we get out there, we pursue well and we we gang tackle really well, and that's one of our strengths. For the preps.
Sports Extra, Eric Perkins, CARE 11 Sports. What a fun matchup. Nice job by both schools to schedule each other. That's a fun thing to see. And it's North on the move. Leon Barnes to the George Tebbs. 40-yard bomb, the two-point conversion, making it eight-zip in favor of the Polars. Later, Barnes under pressure. He'll dump it off. Jermaine Jennings will take it and watch what happens. Nice nifty move there. Great block. Downfield, another good block. Another nice move, and he's gone. 50 yards for the score. North led at this point, 14-0. He's still breaking tackles. Final score in this game, 36-18. Minneapolis North with a nice win. Hey, under the dome tonight, under the big top, Breck and Hill Murray. Late first half, Breck leading 27-7. Their quarterback's a good one. Nick Vanderboom to Dominique Bird, 25-yard play. It would set up a touchdown pass from Vanderboom to Mark Jagla, 13 yards. And Breck is up big over the Pioneers, 33-7. Why did Hill Murray struggle? How about eight interceptions on the night? Three returned for touchdowns. That's the All-State linebacker, Dominique Bird, going 75 yards for the score. Breck returns three picks for touchdowns, and they win big tonight. The final score, 46-14. to South and their defense just ganging up all over South. Nice play here to stuff them. Then the second quarter belongs to the Carlos Love. He'll bust loose on a 35-yard touchdown run. 7-0 record for Washburn. They get the Raiders next week for the Twin Cities title game.